But wait, how did it get here, you ask? Well, let me tell you. Hello everyone, welcome back to Axangel RC. It all started as a regular range test flight, and on the way back, something weird happened. As it was flying normally, all of a sudden I noticed some weird behavior. The swan dropped its nose without me giving the input and started moving around quite a bit. And all of this is not something that should be happening on this model without pilot input. Then it started to lean to turn to the left and was about to go into a tip store when the autopilot finally got the hint that something was awry and intervened by doing the emergency transition to hover mode. And so there it was hovering 500 meters above the ground and around 4 kilometers away from home. Since I clicked the return to home button before, as I didn't want to bother flying it back, it was still in return to home and was unresponsive to my attempts to transition it back to fixed wing mode until I flipped the mode switch to get it out of return to home. However, just as it transitioned back to fixed wing mode, something happened again and it again reverted back to the hover mode, but this time with a twist. Literally. It did a few flips, was rocking and shaking all around and then it just started disc spinning all the way to the ground. It was amazing to be watching this on the screen of the remote with good enough signal for it not to lose the video link and to actually see the spin almost all the way down. Good thing about this system is that the monitor is integrated into the radio and I had pretty accurate coordinates due to the telemetry of where it ended up still showing on the screen and since the radio also shows its location on the map it wasn't that difficult to find the plane. Of course I would have preferred for it to have ended up in a field somewhere rather than on top of the mountain between thick trees but at least it was not unrecoverable. Actually on the way there the telemetry managed to get a connection out of the blue which at the time showed me that the battery is still connected, a video frame made it through and I also got an updated location. A bit of hiking later and I eventually found it and just as I thought on the way there half of it was missing. Even more surprisingly my DJI Osmo camera remained attached to the plane through this whole event despite being held on by only the single thin velcro strap. It was only after I watched the 4K 60 frames per second video from it that I saw when exactly the left side of the plane decided to go on its merry way and after reviewing the screen capture files from the remote I actually saw that it is also visible on just a single frame so there was no way for me to see this as it was happening but I did surmise as much given what happened. As you would expect, I was not able to locate the missing parts of the plane since they could have ended up a good way away seeing as how it detached pretty high up and there was strong wind throughout the day, but I was really curious as to what led to this incident. Looking at the image of the departing left side of the plane, I noticed that one of the motors is actually detached from the mount and the prop is broken, which does give things a certain direction. Also, listening to the audio from the DJI Osmo Actions recordings does reveal exactly when it happens since you can hear some knocking sounds as if something is banging into plastic, which I assume was the motor coming out of the mount and the prop breaking as it starts swinging around banging into stuff. <laughs> But let's take it from the beginning. So, all is going well and the plane is on its way back home when something obviously happens since it dips that nose, starts rocking around and then almost goes into a tip stall. At that point the autopilot intervenes and transitions back to hover mode, saving the plane this time. So, since it is able to maintain a stable hover, I assume all motors are firmly attached to the plane and working still. Next, I click the button, the plane begins to transition to fixed wing mode, while also staying banked to the right for some reason for a brief moment, accompanied by a good deal of vibrations, both visual and audible. Then it reverts back to hover, at which point you can hear a knocking sound, as if something is banging into something else, which I assume was at that point the motor coming off and starting to swing around, breaking the prop. <laughs> 
following, it starts doing flips, stopping very briefly in an upright position before continuing to do yet another flip, and then after a few flips, it starts doing some random rotations left and right, which I assume was brought upon by the now slightly separated left motor module from the fuselage, which had also disconnected power to the remaining working motor on that side, and following a brief randomness, the left side of the plane can be seen departing, and after that it goes into a pretty stable and expected frisbee mode all the way to the ground. I say expected because with only half of the motors still attached and working, that is what you would get. Now, all of that is just a theory and speculation. Sadly, I cannot be certain what exactly happened and what caused the torn off motor and how it even managed to slip out of the carbon spa with so much twisting and turning, which should actually make it more difficult to slip off. I did share this event with HEQ and they think that it may be possible there was a crack in the plastic around the motor mount, which at some point caused the plastic to fail completely and the motor to come out, but that doesn't really explain the weird behavior and almost tip stall prior to the first emergency hover transition, nor does it explain the second hover transition or the reason why the autopilot felt the plane was exhibiting some weird behavior and it had to intervene in both situations, which only then probably, finally, led to the breaking of the motor and everything that followed. Upon coming home, I got the other right motor module that I have to examine it and see if I can figure out how the motor could have come out of the mount. And while playing with it, one of the motors got stuck. When I examined it closer, I saw that it was missing one of the magnets, which means it had come undone and had blocked the bell from spinning, and it got me wondering whether it is possible that the same thing had happened in the air. One of the magnets getting loose, halting the motor suddenly, which could generate enough force to tear it out of the mount, but regrettably, all of this is just speculation in theories. Sadly, the log from the autopilot is almost 600 megabytes and HEQ were not able to open and view it because their software says it's too big and it can't open it, which is a real pity as I really would have liked to get some answers for at least some of the weird behaviors that were observed during this incident. If some of you guys think that you may have better luck opening the file, I'd leave a link where you can download it from in the description below would be awesome if somebody can shed some light on what happened. Also, if you have your own theories after watching and listening to the video, please, by all means, share them in the comments below and let's see if we can get to the bottom of this. HEQ were very cool about it. They shipped out a full set of replacement parts for the plane immediately, which I appreciate very much. I can only hope their customer and warranty service is the same for all their customers. So, hopefully those parts will be here very soon and I will be able to continue my range and endurance tests of this plane, but all of that will be in the following Swan K1 Pro video. But let me give you a little taste of the range. It is more than the official specs, more than double that even. And on that bombshell, it is time to end today's video. If you have enjoyed it, please consider liking, sharing it and subscribing. And if you really liked it and found it useful, you could also consider using the new super thanks function now available on my videos to show your support and gratitude. Using any of the affiliate links in the description below to purchase anything from those websites will also go a long way towards supporting this channel at no additional cost to you. Another way you can support me is Patreon, the link is also there and I would like to express my eternal gratitude to all the people who have supported me so far in any way and will continue to do so. I wish you all successful flights and I will see you next time.